space, the final frontier. It has always been speculated that there is adventure and even life beyond our planet. With so many possibilities for advancements, it is truly fascinating whenever anything is discovered. You never know what small finding will lead to something big and what big findings will be revolutionary. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at recent space discoveries. NASA Engineers Puzzled by Voyager 1 Data Recently, veteran spacecraft Voyager 1 left scientists scratching their heads at the strange nature of some new readings. The spacecraft, which was launched over 40 years ago in 1977, has spent the decades journeying further and further from Earth, taking readings and measurements as it goes. Initially intended to simply study Jupiter and Saturn, successful discoveries on these planets led researchers to expand Voyager 1's mission, eventually entering interstellar space in a historic event in August of 2012. Interstellar space is the mysterious space between the stars, filled with a wealth of material cast off by fading stars over millions of years. The readings Voyager 1 gathers from such unique excursions provide valuable information about such a mysterious and little-studied aspect of the cosmos. However, recently, some of these readings have been giving scientists pause. It seems that the attitude, articulation and control system readings are nothing more than randomly generated telemetry as the data being collected appears to be generating impossible readouts. These readings are what keep Voyager 1's antenna pointing at our planet to enable communication, and the antenna has not strayed from its position oriented towards Earth. Additionally, the built-in fault protection systems which would detect system failures or other malfunctions have not been triggered. It seems that everything is in perfect working order, except for the fact that the readings appear to be impossible. Suzanne Dodd, a project manager for Voyager 1 with NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, spoke in a statement regarding the strange occurrence, saying that with regards to Voyager 1 and its counterpart Voyager 2, a mystery like this is sort of par for the course at this stage of the Voyager mission. The spacecraft are both almost 45 years old, which is far beyond what the mission planners anticipated. We're also in interstellar space, a high-radiation environment that no spacecraft have flown in before. So there are some big challenges for the engineering team. But I think if there's a way to solve this issue with the AACS, our team will find it. As Voyager 1 is currently the furthest human-made object from Earth, flying through space at an astonishing 23.3 billion kilometers away, despite the seemingly impossibility of the readings, there is a chance that they are still meaningful and point to a mysterious phenomenon that we do not yet understand. Yet, after nearly five decades of constant exposure to high-powered cosmic radiation, it would surprise no one to discover that things have gone a little haywire and the valiant Voyager 1 might be showing its age at last. At the very least, researchers hope that this is nothing more than a minor malfunction, as the signal strength is not diminishing and the antenna is still functioning properly despite the impossible data. Searching diligently for the source of the problem, NASA scientists hope to locate and correct the problem and get Voyager 1 back into service as soon as possible. Equipped with three plutonium-fueled radioisotope thermoelectric generators that are expected to be able to power the probe until at least 2025, perhaps there are a few more years of life left in Voyager 1 after all. We've detected the closest extragalactic FRB yet. Have we found the closest extragalactic fast radio burst? Astronomers think so. Better yet, it appears to have come from a surprising location. FRBs are powerful, brief emissions of light that come from unknown sources. It is only for the last two decades that we have known they have existed. So many questions about them have yet to be answered, but scientists now know that the closest FRB comes from a different galaxy than ours, and it is only 11.7 million light-years from Earth. Dr. Brian Gainsler, director of the Dunlap Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics, said in a tweet about the discovery, We found a fast radio burst in a globular cluster. This is definitely not a place where fast radio bursts are expected to live. Just what is going on? 
This relatively close FRB has been dubbed FRB 20200120E. When we say relatively close, we mean that the FRB is about 40 times closer than the next closest extragalactic signal. It also appears, as previously mentioned, in a clump of incredibly old stars. This is not typically a place in which you would expect to find them. This discovery suggests FRBs can emerge from a wider range of environments than we previously thought. These bursts of light, however, are notoriously difficult to research. The bursts occur briefly, as in less time than the blink of an eye, and tend not to repeat. These two factors illustrate why the fast radio bursts are so hard to predict, trace, and understand. No matter what remains to be found about FRB 20200120E, one thing is certain. This FRB will shake up the scientific community and maybe teach us something new about star interactions in globular clusters. Only time will tell what happens next. Astronomers see a star spaghettified by a black hole. For the first time, material filaments wrapped around a supermassive black hole have been discovered, indicating that a star trapped by the black hole's gravity has been destroyed by spaghettification. Scientists have only just discovered evidence of a physical filament from a star in the neighborhood of the black hole. A team of astronomers from the Netherlands Institute for Space Research, or ESRON, and Radboud University in the Netherlands discovered a spaghettified star around the poles of a distant black hole. This new study was published in the journal Monthly Notices of the Royal Astronomical Society on March 24th. The effect, also known as tidal disruption, occurs because the black hole's gravity pulls more on the side of the star that is closest to it. The black hole breaks the star apart before sucking in its mass and transforming it into a lengthy filament in the process. Previously, the only proof of a star dying after passing too close to a galaxy's centre came in the form of short bursts of electromagnetic radiation emitted by supermassive black holes. Around the equators of black holes, accreted matter disks have been discovered. The disk orbits around the equator at an extremely high speed, emitting heat, X-rays and gamma rays in the process. It is made of material that is drawn to but not yet swallowed by the black hole. The Doppler effect stretches or shrinks electromagnetic waves depending on whether the source is moving towards or away from the observer, and is created by the fast motion of the material in the accretion disk. As a result, the light radiated by moving away from the Earth component of the accretion disk would be brighter. The scientists, on the other hand, found no proof of this. The researchers also stated that they could detect X-rays, indicating that they were facing the black hole's pole. According to the statement, the accretion disk is the sole part of a black hole system that releases this type of radiation. We wouldn't see the accretion disk's X-rays if we were staring edge-on. Supermassive black holes, which are millions or even billions of times heavier than the Sun, are thought to exist at the center of most galaxies. Over billions of years, they expand and engulf everything that falls into their gravitational pull. The brilliant X-rays that black holes release as they feed on gas and matter from their surroundings allow astronomers to discover them. Stars orbiting in the center of galaxies may occasionally go too close to black holes and become trapped by their pull. They are drawn closer and closer to the black hole, eventually succumbing to spaghettification. The exoplanet TOI 1231b out of all the space mysteries that haunt our minds, perhaps one of the biggest revolves around a single question. Are we truly alone in this seemingly endless black void? That thought alone might evoke scary images of aliens and potential space warfare. However, scientists have yet to discover those classic big-headed and big-eyed aliens. What they have found instead is their everlasting search for life beyond Earth are several planets that could fundamentally change how we view atmospheric composition and planetary formation. One of those planets, or should we say exoplanets, is called planet TOI-1231b, existing at just 90 light-years away. It orbits around a red dwarf star and is about three and a half times the size of Earth. In comparison to what we know in our solar system, 
it has a similar gaseous climate to that of Neptune. As noted by scientists, it is one of the coolest and comparatively small planets known to date. Exoplanets are large bodies extending beyond our solar system that orbit other stars. In general, they mostly exist in a small region of our Milky Way galaxy in the thousands and rising. As the technologies of space exploration only get more advanced and ambitious, we could see the number of exoplanets increase to the tens of thousands within a decade. Although we cannot exactly go jump ship and live on planet TOI 1231b due to its small size, its Neptune-sized existence offers a fantastic opportunity for scientists to capture one of the first barcode-type readings of its atmosphere. Perhaps those readings will help us to locate similar worlds. Mars's surface was carved by fast floods from overflowing craters 3.5 billion years ago. Mars is always topical and convenient being our next-door neighbor in the solar system, and yet we are so far from understanding the red planet's history. A new study has suggested that Mars's surface was in fact shaped by catastrophically furious floods from overflowing craters a jaw-dropping 3.5 billion years ago. These floods were so powerful that they carved out deep chasms and led to significant movements of sediment across the planet's surface, making such lake breach floods a more important process than we may have originally imagined. It is thought that floods of this kind would have lasted weeks and could have eroded and deposited so much sediment that the largest lakes on Earth, such as Lake Ontario and Lake Superior, would have been completely filled had we experienced such fast and vigorous flooding here. The result, as seen today, was a buildup of high, jagged walls of rock, very similar to Earth's own canyons. The discovery is surprising to many experts, because up until now, it has been widely thought that these events were anomalous in nature, occurring as one-off events. We knew that crater lakes were common on Mars billions of years ago when the planet had liquid water on its surface, but the rapidity and impact of these floods caused by overflowing craters were not fully understood until now. As we now begin to seriously study these past phenomena through the use of satellite imaging, scientists are studying the surface of Mars to understand the extent to which these floods managed to carve river alleys. So far, the crater lakes have been examined only on an individual basis, comparing depth, length and volume of the river alleys their breaches created. With a staggering 262 breached lakes across the whole of Mars, there is so much to investigate and learn from. Hopefully, these endeavors will lead to explanations of how these floods fundamentally shaped the planet's surface as we know it today. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.